The Viennese coffee house is a very, very important part for Viennese life on its own. The German writer Bertolt Brecht used to say, Wien? Das ist diese kleine Stadt, die um lauter Kaffeehäuser herum gebaut ist. Und drinnen sitzt die Bevölkerung und liest den ganzen Tag Zeitung. We are now in the Café Central. And this is a very special place. It was very much part of a special period of Austrian history. There was the time we call historicism second half of the 19th century, when Ringstraße was created, uh, when uh, um, Vienna tried to become an international city. In the Orient, we know they always have had coffee houses, but in Vienna it was actually introduced by the Turks, way back in the 1683, when the Turks tried to conquer Vienna, they had been beaten, but they left behind a lot of treasures. There were many, many, many sacks full of green beans. There was one man, one gentleman, who knew exactly what it was. That was a Mr. Kolschitsky. And that Mr. Kolschitsky, he was a very, very sinister character, actually. He was kind of a spy and everything. He knew Turkey, he knew all the Eastern world. And Mr. Kolchitsky was able to open the first uh, coffee house in Vienna. And the wonderful thing about the typical Viennese coffee house is you can spend all day there. You just have your melange or your kleiner brauner, grosser brauner. Fiaca, you know, many, many kinds of coffee. It, the important thing is the coffee house, it's the place, it's the environment here. The coffee, the mocha, is just the entrance ticket. That is the special thing why writers, of course, like to be here, or politicians in exile, for instance. Do you know, people like Trotsky, or Lenin, Stalin. When they were in exile, before the whole thing in Russia started, they met here at the Café Central. By the way, there's a nice story I would like to share with you. Um, the story goes that one day a politician, Austrian ambassador in Russia, in Moscow, phoned very, very excited the f foreign minister in Vienna and said, oh, Excellency, Excellency, something terrible happened. There's a, re a revolution in Russia. And His Excellency said, What? Who should make this revolution? Perhaps that Mr. Trotsky from our Café Central? One thing is for sure. There is really, I could say, a coffee house for every kind of person, for every character, for every age, really. And, and very important thing is one one day or the other every Viennese develops a special liking for a special place. And the Havelka, from the very beginning of his existence, was very much entangled with uh, theatre, with actors, uh, with, with the arts in general. It is still owned by the family of the founder. Contrary to the other Austrian cafes, the Havelka has just started after the war. Here, the Havelka was the first place where people who were involved with the arts met again. 
having now seen the classical Viennese cafes, two examples of them, now we'll go to the Demel. The Café Demel is something very different because it is a, com a different kind of café. It's the so-called Café Conditorei. Conditorei is a pastry shop. And Demel is not only a coffee house and a pastry shop, it's even more, it is a Hoflieferant. Hoflieferant means the Demel supplied their products, their beautiful pastries and cakes to the imperial court, to the imperial family. And the Demel, that was the meeting place for society ladies who wanted to taste the wonderful cakes and they had this society gossips. You will have noticed that I am myself a great lover of coffee houses and like to go there. But uh, should you ask me why I love coffee houses and cafes? It's hard to say because it's so much part of my life. I just couldn't imagine to be without it. And I'm sure, and I know, I'm not the only one here, you know.